What's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm back here at Jaguar Land Rover St. Petersburg, and guess what? We have something a little unique sitting here right next to me. What is it? It's a 2009 Mercedes-Benz SL 550. But before we get into this silver arrow with a folding hardtop, let's talk about what's going on here. The SL, that really was a signature, and still is, it actually came back, signature top class luxury performance vehicle. Now what's fascinating is, is that back in the day when the SLs first started coming out, uh, the, the style on them was really second to none. And even fast forward to now with the new generation of the SL still taking on that unique form and driving experience, a little different than what you're seeing here. But for me, this really was a standout year being just a two-seater with a V8 underneath the hood, a naturally aspirated V8. Now, what I want to find out is if you're looking for a Mercedes-Benz and you want something that's unique, that stands out, and it has a good driving experience, does this SL550 check off all those luxury performance car boxes? Let's go ahead. Let's dive into ours and find out. Right off the bat, I firmly believe there's no better color for Mercedes-Benz than silver. Yes, there's others, white and black, those look good, but silver just fits it. And what's fascinating is that if you know your racing history, back during the earliest of Grand Prix days and sports car racing days, you actually had your car painted based off of what country you were from with the car. So silver was the color of German vehicles. And that's one of the main reasons why I think it looks so good. It's just part of that heritage. Now at the front of the business for 2009, the SL did get a refresh. They changed up the headlight design. Instead of having more of the rounded shape, they kind of went a little bit on the angle side of things. You do have projector beam headlights inside the headlight housing. Working our way down, we even have fog lamps nice and low. But one thing that they did that we're gonna have to zonk is the fake vent in the lower corner. They could have just kept that smooth. Just kept it smooth and I would have been fine with it. Even the way that they worked the lower lip all together into the front fascia just keeps it a clean design. And that's one thing I've always liked about German vehicles, especially during this time period. The designs are just super clean. Now, as we come across that iconic badge, the Mercedes-Benz Silver Star, that arrow-shaped design, focusing on the three different forms of transportation that was produced. You do have functionality in the center. So before there was a flow tie, you actually had the flow through on this Mercedes-Benz badge. Another thing that they changed was that they added the chrome center section here. And I think for a luxury performance car, it works. It's nothing too over the top. Love the way everything comes to a nice peak in the center. And then down below, you do have full functionality because like I said, underneath the hood of this model, we do have a naturally aspirated V8. Now, as we rise up that long, low slung hood, this is something that for the SL, even going back to the early days, really makes my heart pitter patter. We got that Mercedes Benz logo there. And this for 2009, they introduced the double bulge on the hood bringing it back to those early Grand Prix days, especially on the Mercedes-Benz SLR Grand Prix racer. Really love that style. You do have functional heat extractors on that top portion. I like the way they have the vertical slots, but fully functional. So that's the good thing to check off. And as we come around the bend, what are we working with wheel and tire setup? I'm really digging the simplicity in the wheels. Wheels have gotten so complicated with the design, but I just love the five spoke design. Kind of has that grooved in edge, almost making it a split spoke. You do have the AMG badge on it. And if you're wondering, well, Joe, what's the size of this tire, of this wheel? You're basically looking at a 19 inch wheel in diameter, and then tires are gonna be 255 on the width and a 35 series sidewall. We do have four piston calipers with the Mercedes-Benz logo on them. And remember, during 2009, we weren't really up to six piston calipers yet. Steel rotor that is cross-drilled to cut down on some of that heat buildup. But definitely, like I said, the silver with our silver SL just looks super clean and uh, really just makes my heart pitter-patter. Now, as we swing it around, I want Steven to show off 
this venting here. Now, it isn't functional, so I am gonna zonk it, but from an aesthetic standpoint, looks spectacular. That part of the car, I feel like, is a little piece of artwork. And if you know the McLaren SLR supercar, it had that same basic design element within that car, but that car is on a totally different level than this one. Now you do have color matched on the mirror caps, the lighting in the uh, side mirrors. Up top, we do have a glass roof. And remember, what's crazy is, is that this is a folding hard top. So you have a glass roof and it's a folding hard top. The roof does not open, the glass does not open, but you do have that kind of blending of the different materials color matched on the door handles and I like the way that they work the side skirt the way it drops down a little bit but really for me the body lines start here and the way it flows down the side just I love it I absolutely love it now out back you're still working on a 19 inch wheel tires out back are 285 so you actually have more rubber to meet the road and the sidewall is a 30 series sidewall so even in 2009 we were talking about rubber bands that were put around these wheels. We kind of rise up. I love the way they have the body line right through the fuel filler door. And then as we swing it around back, it's that silver, that silver rainbow that starts at the A pillar and flows all the way back to the rear pillar. Nice, large glass window for the back. And this one, because it's not an AMG SL, it doesn't have any extra spoilers or anything like that. And I'm okay with that. Simple. SL 550, this is back in the day where the 550 actually stood for something, and you'll see when we pop the hood. And then dropping it down to parking lot level, you do have these stainless steel exhaust tips. I gotta zonk this fake vent garbage here. I don't know why they didn't, they should have just painted it silver, and then you have that nice little lower bumper area. But let me know in the comment section if you're digging this older style of the SL. While you're doing that, let's go pop the hood and see what's Powering. All right, guys, we got the hood popped. You do have hood struts. There it is. Now, you do have a large engine cover, but it's tasteful with the Mercedes-Benz badge, a little bit of silver, and that V8 nameplate. And like I said, SL550, it means something. This has a 5.5 liter naturally aspirated V8 pumping out 382 horsepower, 391 pound-feet of torque. It is mated to a seven-speed automatic transmission, zero to 60 in about 4.9 seconds, top speed 155 miles per hour, MPGs 13 in the city, 21 on the highway. She is heavy though, because she is a folding convertible hard top. She weighs 4,220 pounds. Now, if you want more performance, they actually offered AMG versions of this vehicle. One of my favorites is the Black Edition. That thing is just downright sick and ultra sexy. But while we go ahead, we got V8 power. Let's fire it up and hear what it sounds like. guys we are inside this 2009 SL 550 I know you're seeing yourself well Joe I'm with you I'm really really liking the style of this car how much is it very good question first of all let me give you a little bit more background so the SL name goes all the way back to the 1950s those SL Goldwing cars which are worth well over a million dollars all fall in that same lineage the SL 550 first came out back in 2003 and like I said, there are other faster, more powerful versions. This car back in 2009 had an MSRP of around $99,000. Let's just say $100,000. This particular one, asking price is $22,700. Let's see what you get for the money to the door panels. Like in the style back then, some nice uh, soft black material with this dark, sort of like Bordeaux blood red interior, just a little bit of gloss black, even the switch gear nicely placed, and you do have heated and ventilated seats with three-way memory seat savings. Harman Kardon sound system, 
and that is a door pocket, which I'll show you on the driver's side, can easily put four Chipotle burritos in there. Now going from the door belt to the dash, love the material, love the two-tone. Check this out. So you have more controls down below for the seats, but then you also have, you know how some people say, hey, are you happy to see me? Or is that just a banana in your pocket? Well, now you can say, hey, I'm happy to see you and I have a banana in between my legs. Open this up, easily put two full-size bananas in there. Call that your banana holder. And then slide on in. This is old school 2009. You have your digital clock up top, soft touch, lock and unlock, controls for your AC vents, and then look at this thing of beauty. This is what the infotainment system was. That's a five inch screen, color display with navigation. You got your CD player, so obviously uh, multi-disc CD player, so you could put in your Pearl Jam, you could put in uh, your White Snake, uh, Beastie Boys, whatever you're listening to, Wu-Tang, you could have that in there. And that's not to make a call, this is for the different discs and stuff. No backup camera, so there's nothing to show you there. Look at this, cup holders built in to the center stack here. Very interesting German design. You do have your dual climate control with the rotary knobs. And then you'll notice that ours is a silver arrow edition, one of just 550 that were made during 2009. You do have a small little tic-tac holder and a 12 volt. And then you'll notice the shifter actually has the engine start stop button on top of it. Very, very interesting what they had going on back then. You do have your controls for your mirrors, your top and all that. This takes back your convertible top. And then what do we have underneath here? Wow, check it out. You actually have quite a large amount of room. I would say you could probably put four, maybe five of those Harry Potter wands that you bought when you were at Universal. You know, when you're starting to do your uh, skidman and roll and all the other spells that you do. I don't even know what the spells are, but uh, I know people buy those wands and they pay big money, so you could keep them in there. Nice little cubby behind the seats because this is just a two-seater. I could actually fit my small bag easily back here. And then look at the seats. First year for Mercedes air scarf. This blows hot air on the back of your neck. That leather looks great. No cracks, no rips, ventilated and heated, multi-adjustable. And then, like I said, you have the glass roof. It doesn't open up, but it's a nice touch. You don't see many folding hard tops with a glass roof and you have this manual shade. But once you come over here to the business end, I want to show you behind this unique steering wheel in this SL550. All right, guys, business time behind the wheel. Before you come in, let me show you the smart little food holders here. Put your Chipotle burritos, no guac. Guac costs extra anyways, but that's, that's smart engineering. Love the large aluminum sill plate. You got the Mercedes-Benz name that lights up. And then look at that pedal box. You actually have an aluminum brake pedal and throttle. And even the e-brake is aluminum, but then they give you a carpet dead pedal. That's terrible. That's a zonk. I would like to see that in aluminum. The seats are really actually comfy in here, and they should be with all the different controls that they have for back then. I'm six feet tall with the top up, plenty of room. And then look at the steering wheel. Really, really interesting. So very simple on the buttons. Nothing else there. The leather, the two-piece, the smooth, the perforated. You do have paddles that go through that seven-speed automatic. And this is a power tilting and telescoping steering wheel. And then we just have analog gauges, which is all I need. Nice white face, backlit LED, tack, speedometer, fuel gauge, and coolant gauge, which is really nice. But you know what? It's about that time. If you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go on throttle in our V8 SL550. All right, guys, we got the trunk pop. Very interesting how the trunk raises up because it needs all that space for when you fold the hard top convertible down. Now, normally when the top is down, this is how much, this is how much cargo space you would have. But because we have the top up, I'm gonna lift that up and it's gonna give you a little bit more room. How much room are we talking about? You're looking at 10.2 cubic feet of space. So not a ton, but definitely be able to put two carry-ons in here no problem, and a duffel bag, which makes it a uh, usable GT performance car, luxury performance car. But why don't we go ahead? It's the first time for everything. Let's pop our cherry together and go on throttle in this SL550.
All right, guys, we're inside this 2009 SL550. Crazy to think that you have the navigation, full color display, uh, early form of Bluetooth, and then the ability to have different drive modes. So I put it into sport mode. There's comfort, sport, and then of course, manual shift. But uh, visibility is actually pretty good out the windshield with that long hood and the double bulge action going on. Visibility out the back is fantastic. And if you're ready, I'm ready. On throw, here we go. Seven speed drops down and we're off. On the brakes. Remember, no six piston brake calipers yet, but we do have rear wheel steer, which actually helps when cornering, of course, whether you're at a higher speed or low speed turning maneuver in a parking lot. But it's very fascinating that with almost 70,000 miles, this vehicle is actually quite tight and well put together. You know, normally, especially convertibles, you you're gonna hear so many squeaks and rattles and creaks and everything else. This one is pretty solid. I'm actually quite impressed. Seats are comfy. You got the heated seats, ventilated seats. I mean, hell, think about how many new cars we drive that don't have heated seats and ventilated seats. But you have that naturally aspirated V8, which of course gives you such linear torque delivery and I really feel that even at the entry SL550 level, you're still going to get some get up and go. Let's go on throttle together. You ready? On throttle. Here we go. Yeah. Fast shifts from that seven speed automatic transmission. And what's crazy is, is that even with the traction control on, I am braking traction a little bit, which is unbelievable. But uh, very fascinating. Today must be uh, National uh, Leaf Blower Day because we have every leaf blower out in St. Petersburg. But like we always say here on Rady's Rides, never a dull moment. And of course, the show must go on. We got people backing out where they shouldn't be backing out. People standing where they shouldn't be standing. I mean, it's just a, it's a real cluster right now. I'm actually going to go around and make a right-hand turn uh, just because I don't want to get in the way of all these people. It's like National Leaf Blower Day, I think. I think I'm supposed to buy him a gift or something. But uh, good feedback from the wheel. It's actually not real loose and floppy like you would think. Are you ready? Oh, throw, here we go. Just enough sound from that V8 all the way out to the 6,500 RPM red line. And like I said, the handling it's quite impressive with the rear wheel steer with this being a rear wheel drive convertible two seat convertible just uh gives it a unique driving experience in here and even though i'm six feet tall plenty of headroom plenty of headroom i don't feel cramped whatsoever over bumps the suspension compression and rebound is actually quite good it's uh not feeling really floaty, but it's also not shaking the feel fillings out of my teeth. But it, for me, it's really that naturally aspirated V8 power, which is just, you don't see that very often anymore, especially with everything going electric. But I tell you, this thing really drives well, tracks straight and, uh, like I said, if you're looking for something that's unique, you just don't see many of these anymore. Especially ones that are in nice shape. <laughs> Chirping tire is a happy tire. Let's do one more on throttle. And then, uh, then we're gonna head back to Jaguar Land Rover St. Pete. All right, from a dead stop, you ready? On throttle, here we go. Nice. I tell you, it does a great job of handling the power and also the shifting is just really superb. I'm gonna show you how easy a U-turn is, especially with the rear wheel steer. I mean, look at that. Like taking candy from a baby. I don't advise doing that, they may bite. 
And like I said, you know, just because it doesn't have 15 piston calipers doesn't mean it can't stop well. It actually brakes really well. There's no vibration in the brake pedal. So we know the rotors are, are not warped or anything like that. And the instrumentation is so easy to read. But we're gonna go ahead and get back to Jaguar Land Rover St. Pete and wrap up this Silver Arrow. So I'll see you in a split second. All right, guys, it's been another great day here at Jaguar Land Rover St. Petersburg. Definitely want to thank Miro and the rest of the crew getting us this very unique 2009 Mercedes-Benz SL550. Let me know what you think. If you're looking for, like I said, that Mercedes-Benz that's a little older, but you want it to be a standout, stylish, but also good driver, is this SL550. Does it bring the goods in that sense? But let me know in the comment section. If you're new to the channel, you're on your way out, hit the subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Raised Rise family. You need to give it up, Stephen Flood. Stephen Flood Photography. He films it all. He loves it all. So show him some love in the comment section. Thank you, Stephen, for all that you do. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.